paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. Nico's dead. What are you doing? I'm ringing an ambulance. No! No ambulance. No hospital. Just put me to bed and leave it at that. I hardly think you'll start shooting in front of all these witnesses. Witnesses are very overrated, William. By the time the police have put their photo fits together, we'll be four one-legged Rastafarians with Welsh accents. Well, you got a photo of them, sir? You're bluffing. Famous last words, William. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, oh. oh my God, he's got a gun! <laughs> Shot. You don't think it was Martin? I don't know who it was now. We best head for the police station. Where did he spring from? I don't know. Jesus! Keach is not moving. Leave him. I said leave him. It looks serious. Move! Come on! Leave him! You sure you don't want one? No. Oh. Always love these. Do you remember those cones they used to do in the shape of an oyster? Can you straighten up as you walk, Graham? You're attracting unwelcome attention. Oh! I'm attracting attention. Uh, this is from the man who shot a dog in front of hundreds of witnesses. What's going to happen about Keechy? He had blood trickling out of his ears. That's serious, that is. Saw it on 999 once. And what if he talks? We should have fetched him with us. I'll tell you what, Ainsley. Why don't you do your extremely enjoyable impression of a totally silent person? Excuse me, officer. Can you direct me to the police station, please? Yes, sir, if you'd like. All right, all right, we'll tell the police, but we don't have to drop Nico in it, do we? I mean, that's not information they need to have, is it? I mean, it's just... Nico's got a bit of form, you see, and you know what the old bill's like. For the last time, woman, Nico's at the bottom of the canal and we're trying to make sure we don't join him. Now, come on! She worked you with her foot or something. All oh, right, we're all upset and angry about all of this, but I don't think taking it out on each other is going to achieve anything. Please don't start your sweet voice of reason routine, William. I'm feeling quite nauseous enough as it is. You know, you could be a real heartless bitch sometimes. Can I? Can I really? Well, let me tell you something. She nearly got us killed. What did I tell you? The police station is where nice, decent people go when they want their mummy. Okay, you grab Gilda. I'll take care of the other two. Oh, my God. Harold Stipso, right? No. No, that was me. Well, if I am bossy, though I notice that's a word that's never applied to men, it's because fate has seen fit to surround me with totally useless and completely unreliable... Tossers. That's the word you're looking for, Susan? We're outside a police station. I know. 
That's what makes it so brilliant. We've been spotted. Oi, you can't park there, you know. We shan't be a moment, officer. What the...? Your own time, Hainsey. Thank you. Thanks for what you did back then, Martin. It's very brave of you. you. Saved our lives. Did he now? Well, it's just lucky I've got a good throwing arm, I suppose. I had trials for Yorkshire when I was a boy. I once bowled out Jeff Boycott. Only in the nets. He said he got something in his eye. But it was my moment of glory. <laughs> your other moment of glory. A bit proud of ourselves then, are we, eh? Well, this has turned into a real dog's breakfast, hasn't it? Clearly, Jazzard won't hesitate to kill you two now. You're witnesses, and you've been parties to his humiliation. I think you'd better keep out of his way, Martin. There might not be a coconut shy ending next time. Now, you wouldn't accept the offer of my protection before, but you can stay here, guarded by my men, for as long as it takes to deal with Jezard. And what about me? Oh, sorry, Gilda, love. Of course, Trevor here will drive you to the station. You can't be serious. It's me he's after. Really? Why is that? Well, because... Oh, yes, I remember now. Because your two-faced scumbag of a boyfriend raided my safe and nicked the contents. That's right, isn't it? But hang on a mo. You've said you don't know what Nico did with my property. Or Williams, for that matter. Nico told you absolutely nothing, you said. That's right. In which case, you're of no relevance. Trevor? But she'll be at Jezard's mercy. You can't just throw her out. Can't I? Well, you'll have to throw me out with her. Oh, here we go. Do you know the correct definition of a hero, William? A hero is an idiot who gets lucky. Like him with his wooden balls. Is it that you still love her? Is that it? Because if it is, that makes the nonsense of everything. People have to deserve your love, surely. Otherwise, well, it's not love. It's a recipe for chaos. All I know is that if I let Gilda just be a a abandoned, I could never live with myself. You're wrong there. You could live with yourself. That's who we all end up living with. All right, then. Go! If you fancy your chances with Jezard. No, Martin. If that is their choice, then so be it. Actually, come to think of it, I think Nico might have mentioned something about a lock-up. Trevor will show you to your rooms. Susan. <sighs> Old habits die hard. Oh. Look, I'm not around. No, all I'm saying is I think at some stage we'll have to tell her. Why? What possible good would that serve? I, I just think Susan has the right to know, that's all. Susan? Susan? Come up. I'm doing the rounds with milky drinks. Oh. Mr. Middlemas says we'll drive you to your house in the morning so you can collect some clothes and any stuff you want. Careful hot. Thank you. Is this room okay? Whose room is it? Mine. Lots of law books. 
Well, my trade. What's my trade? You don't practice anymore? No, no, I advise Mr. Middlemass on legal matters sometimes, but, um, no, I no longer practice. Why is that? I'm not allowed to. Anyway, I, I hope you get a decent night and uh, don't worry if you hear strange noises. That'll be the crows on the roof. <laughs> <laughs> Night night. Night night. Fourteen vehicles were involved in the pileup, and twelve people were taken to hospital, Bill? although only one has been detained. This is Jeez. Gary Bell for South East tonight. Police are investigating reports of two separate shooting incidents in Margate early. Mr. Middlemass, we're on! In the first incident, a dog was shot dead at a fun fair. Eyewitnesses have put together the following photo fit of the armed man. He is described as short, with curly blonde hair, and wearing a green anorak. Pathetic. Another man, as yet unidentified, was found at the scene with a fractured skull. Police are also looking for this man, who is thought to be violent. Hey, Trevor, quick! It's Al Capone! In a separate incident, shots were fired outside the Margate police station. The police say they have no reason to connect the two incidents, and are treating the second incident as a case of road rage. Oh, yeah, well, nothing gets past them, does it? Gilda's coughed up an address for Nico's lock-up. We'll go there first thing in the morning. Anyone mind if I watch BBC Two? It's in Attenborough about how we misjudge the cockroach. What's that noise? Can't you stop that silly bitch? She keeps wailing like a bloody arrow at a funeral. She's grieving. A man she loved has been murdered. Well, can't she grieve with a bit more dignity? You go and put that to her, then. Who topped this bloke, anyway? Jezzard. When are you gonna do something about that animal? When the moment's right. Have you taken your pills? Mind your own business, arsehole. Oh, well, nice to see him on the mend. We all grieve differently, don't we? I remember w w when my dad died, Susan and I handled it very differently. I cried and cried. It's an awful sound, isn't it? Yeah, I can't bear to hear a woman cry. What, all of them? All right, we'll get straight back here then, yeah? Yeah, right, see ya. Bit of bad luck, I'm afraid, William. I sent some boys to fetch your car, but all four wheels are being bricked up. Oh. Well, that's quite reasonable luck by my recent standards, actually. What is all this funny sort of italic writing they do? It's everywhere, look. Trendy graffiti, is it? I hate obscure art. Abstract rubbish. Black squares, sheep in formaldehyde. That's not art. That's just taking a piss. Hey, what's this one here, boss? Fingers crossed all your belongings may be in here, William. Right, if you'll kindly do us the honours, please, Trev. It's all about timing, that is. Well, perhaps Jezzard, he got here first and he's had all the gear away. Perhaps Nico lied to Gilda. I think that's quite possible, actually. You know, in some ways, uh, Gilda's as much a victim as anyone in all this. How are we doing? 113 for five. Oh. 
I blame these sissy helmets. And anyway, they wear these things, and they still duck, don't they, eh? It'll look like after she's back. Look at the size of them. All right, Sue, we missed you. Took a bit of a break, did we? Something like that. All right there, Sue. Would you like a cup of tea? Well, not stopping. Just collecting a few things. I'll be away for a little while. How have you been getting on? Well, all the uh, underpinning business because of the sewage problem, that's all sorted, and uh, we're coming along nicely. I can't see much progress. Well, we're making big progress, so Big, big progress. progress. How are we doing in the cricket? What cricket's that, then? So, the big question, when will you be finished? Oh, I reckon, um, two weeks. Two weeks. OK, we'll say two weeks and Dave and Alan here can be my witness. Now, while I'm away, will you lock up thoroughly and leave the landing lights on? No problem, sir. I'll be popping back to see how you're getting on with Alan and Dave. And now I'm going upstairs to do some packing. Funny, isn't it? The way some people cause nothing but pain. I've got the beginning to a country and western song there. Some folk cause nothing else but pain. See, Gilda's a born betrayer. And you and me, we're betrayees. Stop the car. See that empty field? That's going to be Middle Mass College. It'll be to educate kids from poor areas. Construction should start soon. Just waiting for planning permission to come through. Well, that's nice. Something worthwhile. Yeah, well, it's something anyway. I've done some very bad things in my life, William. I mean very bad things. Things you'd find impossible to imagine. No, oh, I knew what I was doing. But it was just how I grew up, what I was used to. Going in hard, hitting them first. Seemed the only way. Until one day, about 15 years ago it was, I was in Richmond Park, Penn Ponds, I'd met a policeman there to... Well, anyway, that's not important. So, I'm just taking a stroll, and I see this bloke that looked... Well, he looked just like me. Same build, same hair colour. His face was really like me. And this bloke, he was flying a kite. Big orange thing flapping about in the wind. And with him were two boys, two little boys, in long shorts, knees covered in scabs. 
and they were shrieking and laughing as their dad made this kite swoop and stuff. And as I watched all this, I was overcome by this awful, truly awful realisation that there are people in this world who don't have to spend their lives looking over their shoulder. We don't have every muscle permanently tensed. People who know what it's like to come into a house and see faces that are pleased to see them. People who'll be remembered. And since that day, William, I've tried, I really have tried, and Martin can vouch for me on this, to be less, less of a monster. But it's not easy, especially when Jezard's trying to drag me back into the gutter. Do you ever have that feeling that someone's operated on you in the night when you were asleep? They've come along and hollered you out from the inside. Well, I sometimes wake up feeling a bit down. A bit down? Yeah. <laughs> oh, William, you're bloody priceless, mate. <laughs> Um, have you got a razor blade I could borrow? A razor blade? Yeah. What do you want a razor blade for? Is that important? It's just like, know what do you want it for? To shave my legs. Oh, you mean a safety razor then? No, not a safety razor. No, I've got a safety razor. No, I said not a safety, safety razor. Safety razor's no problem. No, I said I wanted a razor. And, uh, ideal for leg shaving. No, I want a razor blade. What to shave your legs with? Yeah. Well, that's silly. Yeah, well, it may be silly, but... I'm totally daft when I'm offering you a safety razor. Look, it's got to be... A... Ideal, a safety razor. No, it's Designed got to be... for the job, in fact. Look, it's got to be a razor blade, OK? Really? Why is that, then? Because I'm going to slash my wrists. There. Are you happy now? No, you're not. What? If you meant it. You wouldn't have drawn attention to yourself by knocking on my door. I didn't have a razor blade, OK? There's a drawer full of kitchen knives downstairs. Right. OK. Thank you. It probably feels like the moment has passed now, does it? Even Nico is dead. Oh, he just buggered off and left me. I don't know which is worse. All right. All right. <laughs> and you're not taking any medication for anything at the moment. You're in good health, basically. Yes. Good. Well, that completes the formalities. Your sample will be forwarded to the lab and we'll get back to you with the results in the next four days. When Dr Amy's recommended you, he stressed that this entire procedure would be strictly confidential. Oh, yes. Patient confidentiality is paramount here. Well, I'm not sure I'm a patient as such. I mean, let's face it, the chances are the problem lies not with me, but with the other parties concerned. Parties? I mean, I'm a fit man, hale and hearty. This kind of problem is presumably less common than mine. Well, to be totally frank with you, Mr Jezzard, infertility can affect just about anybody for all sorts of reasons. But your, your sample will tell us your sperm count and then... Are you sure you have enough of a sample to make a valid assessment? Oh, yes. Don't worry. Only I'm quite happy to provide you with some more if you... No, 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 that, uh, that really won't be necessary. I'll escort you down to the atrium. Place is a bit of a maze, I'm afraid. 
Um, Dr. Amos mentioned you're in property. I'm in many things, actually. Oh, yes. Safety and diversity, eh? I dabble a bit in property myself. Nothing very grand. A bit of turf alongside a few reservoirs, that sort of thing. Just something to fall back on when I want to wave the old rat race bye-bye. Mind you, the way things are going. Mr. Jessup? Why is that the Middlemass Wing? Oh, that's because it was funded by Mr. Middlemass, a local businessman. A very generous benefactor, as it happens. It's a wonderful legacy for anyone to leave behind, of, of course. The Trust is constantly looking for benefactors, people with, 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 with a bit to spend and, and a sense of citizenship. Actually, I've uh, got a few minutes to spare. Why don't I... Uh, why don't I show you around the Middlemass Wing, give you a feel of what can be achieved? I'd like that very much. Just follow me. Uh, honey, I, I was just wondering if I could have a brief word with the consultant about my aunt, and just to get the full picture. I'm afraid he's not with us today. Oh, well, perhaps Dr. Stanforth could... I'm afraid Dr. Stanforth is... Oh, well, he's got to take a few months off. But you can talk to me. I've taken over on the ward from Dr. Stanforth. Right. Well, uh, I suppose um, my sister and I were just wondering uh, sort of what to expect, really, and maybe when. Well, I'd say Mrs. Ashton should be going home in a couple of days. Going home? Oh, yes. We're very pleased with her. She's making an excellent recovery. But, but, but we were given to understand there was no prospect of her making a recovery. Really? It wasn't Dr. Stanforth who told you that, was it? Only he's been under a lot of stress and some of his behaviour was rather eccentric. So you're saying there's hope? Hope? Good Lord, yes. She'll be as good as new. Just needs to rest. And that's why we've put her in a room on her own. Mrs. Ashton's in the ward. That's her. Halfway down on the right. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. I got confused. God, what a thing to do. Please forgive me. Well, it's unforgivable, I know, but I don't know what to say. You all right? Don't worry. I'm OK. No harm done. I'm sorry. I'm a disgrace, a bloody disgrace. Oh, I'm sure you have lots to remember. What do you think to do to someone? I'm a fucking disaster area. He's right. I'll never make a proper doctor. Honestly, it's okay, just forget it. Miss Scatty, that's me. Bloody doctor, bloody airhead. God, I'm sorry. Your aunt will probably deteriorate quite quickly over the next few weeks. She's going to the hospice, isn't she? Please, feel free to report me. Oh, silly. No, I mean it. I don't want to report you. It's not important. And perhaps if we could give Mr. Jezard here a sort of quick once round the pier tour. Only he's uh, thinking of donating some money to the Trust. Ah, well, all contributions gratefully accepted. <laughs> In fact, this research unit is only here thanks to the extraordinary generosity of Mr. Middleman. I know. And what exactly is it you're researching then? Well, basically, the brain. We're investigating the human brain, trying to unlock its secrets. The brain will never let you ride inside, will it? I'm sorry? Well, I mean, once the brain knows what you're up to, it will defend itself, surely. Oh, I think I know what you're getting at, but we're very careful in any experiment to ensure that the subject doesn't know the purpose or technique of that experiment, so the brain can't second-guess us, so to speak. What's this? That's the brain of a psychopath. You see this little yellow area? We think that might be the key to the age-old question as to why some people seem to have, uh, I suppose you'd say, um, um, it's a little bit that's not firing properly. And because it's not firing properly, these people aren't able to connect with the outside world in the way that you or I do. Is that right? 
I've called in at your place. You've got some post. See that crane out there? Uh, this, this window here. All day yesterday, people were jumping off it on those long elastic thingies. Bungee jumping. That's it. God, but my memory's buggered. How are you doing for reading matter? Mobile library woman came round. All she had was books by... Oh, that silly old cow who always dresses in pink and writes all that stuff about virgins and gypsies with eyes like blazing coals. Barbara Cartland? Yeah. Always got one of those dogs on her lap. Horrible wheezy things. Look like a weasel that's been hit in the face by a shovel. Pekingese? Pekingese. Yep. Can't remember any more names. Or where I put my slippers. Wish I had a go at bungee jumping. Looks like fun. Must feel like committing suicide only without the messy bit. Have you brought my post? Yep. Couple of cards, Bill from British Telecom. Well, they can piss off for a start. Let them try sending me a reminder where I'm going. Generalizations are dangerous things, but there are certain core characteristics common to many psychopaths. Uh, selfishness, callousness, uh, using other people as objects, uh, the need for constant stimulation, a high sense of self-worth, promiscuity. Sounds like a lot of fun, though, doesn't it? Yes, I know what you mean. No, really. I mean, someone's bound to enjoy themselves more, aren't they? Living by their own rules. Or no rules, even. Well, you could argue that, but there again, not having access to a lot of feelings means that they're missing out on a very enriching aspect of human experience. What you don't know, you don't miss. Well, true, but... Um... And it's all down to this yellow bit, you say. Auntie, can I ask you something? Just recently I found myself remembering this conversation. I once overheard Mum and Dad having... Who are those two? They don't seem to be visiting anyone. Only you read about these weirdos that hang around hospitals. Sometimes they try and pass themselves off as doctors so they can fiddle with women's bits. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, this place. And where have you been? Chatting with your doctor. That other one's gone. I know. They found him sobbing in the toilet. Is there anything you want? Yes, I want to go home. Well, Auntie, the thing is, you're not really well enough to be at home. Yes, that's why the plan I'm is... not going to that place. Auntie? I'm not going. That's that. We discussed it. Did we discuss it? I don't remember discussing it. You must have discussed it without me. Well, you don't want to stay here. So Why what's... can't I come and live with one of you two? Well, in normal circumstances, that would be fine. But right now, William and I are... Well, I've got the builders in for a start, so the place is a wreck, and William can't stay at home. My own fault. Should have had kids of my own. They wouldn't dump me in a hospice. Auntie, we are not dumping you. Tim Henman won again. We show these kinds of photos to patients who've been guilty of random acts of violence. Because in ordinary people, what we know from tests, that these pictures arouse intense feelings of pity, compassion. Ah, not very pretty, is it? But in people who are uh, disconnected, disturbed, this photo would elicit very little or indeed no response at all. In the, the magic yellow area? Yes. 
tricky business, though, isn't it? Because, I mean, if you were to ever reach the point, say, where you knew exactly how my brain worked, well, then you'd be able to control me, wouldn't you? Well, um, oh, I'm sorry. Ah, duty calls. <laughs> If you'll excuse me, it's been nice meeting you, Mr. Desard, and uh, I hope you can see your way clear to doing something for the hospital. Cheers, Pete. Oh, actually, I meant to say, I've uh, got tickets for Glyndebourne on Saturday, and I wonder if... That was interesting. On with the tour. Well, I still think you should complain. Oh, what's the point? It's just about the worst thing any doctor can do to give someone false hope like that. Well, there was only a split second of hope. Just the briefest of glimmers. Besides, the poor girl was mortified. I thought she was going to disembowel herself, so I don't think... Hello, Susan. Well... Hi. So, uh, what are you doing here? Um, Auntie Dorian's here. Oh, yes, of course. I'm sorry. Um, which ward's she in? Princess Beatrice. Well, uh, perhaps we'll pop in on her if... Um... We've never met. I'm Claire. We're just here to uh, run through the birth plan with the midwife. Good. Oh, uh, they're with us. Uh, this is Trevor and Dave. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. Well, you tracked Susan down in the end. He was a bit worried about you, old girl. Yeah, well, uh, anyway, um, we can't stand around here chatting. Uh, we're late for the... Uh, give us a bell, will yeah? you? Um, sort out of lunch. Okay then. Um, catch you later. Bye. Bye. Good luck. Thanks. Bit of a coincidence, wasn't it? You okay? He's going bald. Actually, my own unit is looking. For Actually, I'm a bit pushed for time. Oh, right. Well, perhaps next time. Someone you know? No. Just admiring the decor. I thought you might fancy something. Um, I've got tea, coffee, hobnobs. Thank you. Uh, if you'd leave them at the top of the stairs. You're not waiting for a tip, are you? Oh, uh, no. No, it, it's just that William... Well, he, he told me what happened at the hospital and uh, I was just wondering if you needed someone to talk to. Oh, I'm being offered counselling, am I? No, not at all. I... He never wanted kids with me, you know. Dennis always said we weren't cut out for parenthood. So we did nothing. Just footled along. Till one day he informed me he'd been to see his GP who had diagnosed depression. And soon after that he realised... The only way to escape the clutches of this dark spiritual crisis was to fuck his secretary. The next thing I knew, he'd gone. Do you still have feelings for him? I have the memory of feelings. Have you got kids? No. Married? Used to be. Who left who? 
She left me 12 years ago now. Ancient history. Gene, space travel. What was the first creature to go into space? Monkey. Um, a monkey. There's boxing on Sky. Oh, yeah. Ballet for the brain damaged. We're watching this. Sunspots. Galileo. Galileo. You should go on this. Sandra, crime. Which notorious criminal, now living in Rio, took part in the great train robbery of 1960? Ronnie Biggs. Mind you, it wasn't that great a train robbery. They all got caught. Ronnie Biggs. Derek Literature. Who wrote the books I, Claudius, and Claudius the God? Robert, Robert Graves. Graves. Uh, Robert Graves. We're walking this. Sylvia, history. Which member of the royal family was appointed Viceroy of India in 1948? That shithead Mountbatten. Well, he was. He was an hypocritical, cowardly, two-faced, big-headed, loathsome bastard. More tea, Vicar. He sent thousands of men to their deaths at the end. And for what? Just so him and that arsehole Churchill could show off. Well, my father served under Mountbatten in the Navy, and, and he, he said he a was... A what? Well, he said Mountbatten was a good commander. Oh, he said that, did he? Yes. Well, then he obviously was as big a prat as you are. Oh, that is very nice. Why don't you insult his mother and his sister while you're at it? Go for the full house. I'll say what I like. He's our guest. He's your guest. They're all your guests. And if he sticks up for Mountbatten again, I'll bloody kill him! I'm very sorry about that, William. He's a bit touchy about the war, especially the Dieppe raid. Did he have friends who died in the raid, then? Well, I don't know if any of them were his friends, but he must have seen a lot of them die. So, who is this Mountbatten? Ah, oh, Gilda, do come in. Have a seat. I wanted to have a chat. You mean he was there? At Dieppe? Oh, yeah. He was decorated. Military cross. Now, Gilda, brace yourself for a bit of bad news. I'm afraid that lock-up you sent us all airing off to proved a bit of a disappointment. Oh. So, how long did you spend in prison? Well, only three months. The judge said he'd taken into account the defence that my irrational behaviour was in response to my wife going. But on the other hand, I had stolen money from clients' trust accounts and spent it all on a six-month binge in Monte Carlo, so he had to do something. Did you gamble it all away? Most of it. About £200,000. I gave away 20 grand in generous tips, lavish gestures and stuff. Oh, and uh, I spent £5,000 on this call girl. High-class call girl. Celine, her name was. Very beautiful. And uh, how many nights does £5,000 buy you? Oh, I, did, I didn't sleep with her. Oh, no, no. I, well, I suppose I wanted to deep down, but... No, I just took her out and spent money on her. <laughs> Perhaps that was gallantry. No, I don't think so. Anyway, when I got out of jail, no one would touch me with a barge pole apart from Mr Middlemass. But I'd done the convincing for him on this place and uh, he took pity on me, I suppose. Well, I'll get these things out of your way. Just shout if you want me. And who else can I see at this wonderful showbiz party? Why, it's my old friend, Chris Eubank. Yes, I am here with my beautiful wife, Karen. And who do I see over there but my old sparring partner, Frank Bruno? Yeah, Will, you know what I mean, Harry. Uh, 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 uh. You know, I might get out of this game, start up doing voiceovers. You can earn a fortune if you sound like Orson Welles or Lloyd Grossman. I've never seen the appeal of impressions. I mean, it's a bit like a dog being able to lick his own arse. I mean, that's clever. What's the point? Hello. Action stations. 
Come on, don't worry about it. I've got a good feeling about this, William. Maybe I should just ring him and cancel. Just get in the car. So how many are left with Guild and the system? No, no, the odds aren't good enough. You stay put, keep me informed. Sorry about that. <clears throat> now, where were we? Well, yes, you see, obviously I'd love to help. You know that. But you see, I'm just a junior minister in trade and industry. You need someone in environment. Although even then, the question of stopping planning permission for this... Uh... The Middlemas College. Yes, well, that would be a local matter, really. You should be talking to someone more on that level. Oh, I see. Yes. So you're saying that you can't intervene in this matter? That's right. You need to deal with someone on the relevant council, say, or the planning department. Right. With your contact, I'm sure you could find someone who could help. Well, possibly, but uh, the only trouble is I wouldn't have any photographs of them, would I? Photographs? Now, the point is, I've met several external candidates who all met the required standards of excellence and quality. Now, you, on the other hand, nearly missed your first interview, arrived late for this one. Well, it has been a period of extraordinary personal upheaval, Headmaster. I'm sorry, I, I don't think I can listen to any special pleading. All staff have their personal problems, me included. Now, I think we have to face the facts here. And I have a duty to respond to underperformance. Hello there. Sorry to barge in. <laughs> Teddy Middlemass, personal friend of William's here. I just came in to ask if I could possibly borrow a pen. This is a confidential interview. I know, I know. <laughs> Will you please leave my study, Mr... Middlemass. As in Middlemass College. Middlemass College? It's going to be built a few miles up the road. But don't worry, it won't be competition. It'll be for problem kids who need a hand. Not the clientele you're aiming at. I like your poster, incidentally. Poster? For the school appeal. Your child's school needs you. Yes, well, we're trying to raise enough to build a state-of-the-art gymnasium. Well, I'm more than happy to make a contribution. What? I'd like to make a contribution. Well, that's extremely generous. How much to put, eh? The old dilemma. <laughs> How much is this Jimmy yours going to cost? Um, £400,000. Well, why don't we call it that, then? Call... Call what? That? The cheque. Why don't I make it out for £400,000? Well, it's nice and simple, isn't it? Uh, w yes, I... Uh... Right, it's the uh, Highdale School Appeal Fund, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, well, it'll be an attractive new feature, won't it? Big modern gym. Mind you, do you know what I reckon is the most attractive feature any school can have? Caring teachers. Like William here. Decent, honest people who do their best to pass those qualities on to the kids. People like that are indispensable. And I mean, Totally indispensable. Don't you agree? Oh, yes, yes. Absolutely. I agree. Good. Here we are. Begsy first go on the wall bars, eh? <laughs> well, then, I'll leave you two gents to uh, carry on with your interview. I'll be waiting for you outside, William. When you're ready. You were saying, Headmaster. What? I like this one. It's really good of you. It's really captured your colour in. It's quite good of the girl, too. Shame you can't see her face. I... I didn't notice anyone taking photos. Well, you were a bit busy at the time, weren't you? Now, here we have the advantage of the wide angle. There's a scratch on all these, you know. I've half a mind to take back to the chemist's. You had these developed at the chemist. Aha, the close-up version. I didn't know you were Jewish. You can go to prison for blackmail, you know. Well, you can go to prison for a lot of things. Quite a few of the things in these photos, actually. 
Look, it really is impossible for me to intervene over this stupid planning permission. It's not my area. A minister in one department can't just breeze into another ministry and start asking favors. Government doesn't work like that. Each ministry has its own integrity. Now, you almost had me believe in you then. <laughs> Gotcha. Well done. Oh, I don't know why I'm so scared of them. Why are so many women freaked out by spiders? I think Freud said they were symbols of sexual repression. Mind you, knowing Freud, he probably said the same about cabbages. <laughs> why didn't you sleep with her? Oh, the call girl in Monte Carlo. Um, I feared her rejection, I suppose. But with the money you were lashing out on her, she was hardly likely to reject you. Yes, but having to buy someone's affection... You can't feel more rejected than that, can you? Well, then, <clears throat> I'll go put the kettle on. <sighs> Look, you must forgive me, but for some reason I... I get all awkward and stuff when I'm near you. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Oh, uh, no, it's okay. You can't help it. What? Well, no, that came out wrong. What I meant was... I can't help it. No, you see, I... What the hell's that supposed to mean? It's just that you... Well, you must have noticed it, surely. Noticed what? The effect you have on men. I mean, don't misunderstand me. I, I, I think you're brilliant, but you are a bit daunting. William says... What does my brother say? No. It's really not important. Tell me. Well, he... he said... that you have a tendency, a, a, just a tendency, to make a man feel... like he's sitting in exam he didn't know he'd been entered for. My brother said that. Yes, but he said it with great affection, believe me. I mean, you had to be there, really. I, I, mean, I mean, in general terms, he couldn't stop singing your praises. Honestly, he... Oh, sod it. How dare you! Something else you talked through with my brother, was it? The frustrated cow just needs a bit of thawing out. Was that it? No, no, it... Get out. Uh, Get out! 